Uh, in this video, we'll be taking up the two homework sheets on graphing polynomial functions from factored form. So uh, the first uh, page here, I have nine equations and I basically generated the nine graphs that correspond with the equations. Um, the first one, there's not much to say, it's um, a quadratic. I tried to make it symmetrical. Um, because we've been working with parabolas for such a long time, it's really important to draw a nice parabola. Um, for all these graphs, I did not find the y-intercept, but you can go ahead and find the y-intercept and add accuracy to your graph. But I didn't go, I didn't do that. So uh, if I wanted you to do that on the test, I would certainly indicate that I want the y-intercept. But uh, I really didn't want you to find it because I don't want to take away from the big idea, which is just graphing polynomial functions. Um, and just knowing where the points of inflection occur and where the uh, bouncing off the x-axis occurs. So you can definitely add the y-intercepts, but the big idea is really just getting the, the main graph of the polynomial function. And a big or common mistake that students make is the, the, the end behavior of the polynomial. Remember we said that the end behavior of the polynomial resembles that of a power function. So make sure it curves the right way. So a lot of students, they, when they do this graph, they curve it this way, okay? That, that is not good because that does not look like a cubic. Cubics shoot up the other way. So in fact, I'm gonna, okay, it's, it's very close to vertical, but it's not, okay? Because of course it's a function, right? So uh, yeah, uh, find the x-intercepts or find the zeros which correspond to x-intercepts and then use the end behavior and the order of the zeros, and you should be able to do all the graphs. So, um, for example, here, this, you're bouncing off the x-axis, quadrant three to quadrant one. Over here, be careful, the factor two minus x, um, we're gonna factor out negative one and then cube that negative one, just to clean up the equation. I really prefer students cleaning up the equation uh, before they graph the, graph the function. Uh, point of inflection at x equals 2 and it goes to the origin quadrant 3 to 4 okay so basically the same thing you can look at the graphs um, for f once again be careful 2 minus x I, I factor out negative 1 so it's x minus 2 and if you square the negative 1 it's becoming positive 1 so the algebra involved here is going to be similar to the algebra involved in the next lesson when we talk about even and odd functions. Okay, point of inflection at the origin, uh, point of inflection here. So, and students also tell me that they have a really hard time drawing the points of inflection. My hint to you is just, you know, practice drawing cubic, because that's what you're really drawing. You're just drawing a cubic at that point on the x-axis. So take your time, practice drawing cubics, um, you can change the angle that might help a little like for example if this if this doesn't look pretty to you What you can do is change the angle Come up higher There yeah, I think that looks prettier just change the angle for yourself um, Don't make your life miserable. Don't make if it's really low your your it doesn't look like a point of inflection um, But watch your end behavior, okay, like this one it looks a little straight. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix that up Let's just make them a little nice and curvy, but curve the right way, okay? Make sure you're curving the right way. Uh, I take off half marks uh, when they're not curved the nice, the correct way. Because it really, it, it, it's a problem because we're not matching the graph with our knowledge because it has to resemble a power function. That's how we know the end behavior of polynomials. Um, so if it doesn't look like a power function, the end behavior at least, then it's, it's really bothersome. Uh, over here, uh, not much to say, but I will factor a negative one here. Okay, next one. So uh, most students actually make a common mistake here. They assume that the value that's been factored out is one. Okay, you cannot assume that this number here is one. Okay, so how did I get these values? Well, it's very similar to what you did in grade 10. When you had the zeros and you had a point, you had to solve for the value, okay? 
So I'll show the algebra here. So hopefully, you know what, let's do uh, B actually, because the factors are easier. For example, 2x minus 7, how about this factor? Because I have a um, x-intercept of 3.5, or 0 of uh, 7 over 2. So if the 0 is 7 over 2, then the factor is 2x minus 7. Uh, it will take some practice, but you'll get used to writing factors like that. Okay, we have here x plus 7x minus 6. How did I get negative 1 over 49? So be careful, x plus 7 comes from the 0, negative 7, and as a bounce, so it's squared. Uh, and of course, we're going with least possible degree to make our life easy. Um, here is x minus 6, the power of 1, because it's crossing linearly. So, uh, I'll do the math, I'll do the math up here, there should be enough room. So, f of x equals, let's use a, x plus 7 squared, and then x minus 6. Okay, so we sub in the point, just like what you would do in grade 10, 6, and then 0 plus 7, 0 minus 6, and you do your algebra and solve for a. And if you do it correctly, you'll get negative 1 over 49. And once you have a, you can write your equation. Okay, so that's why I did for um, for all 6. Okay, I'll let you take a look. Just make sure you have the correct exponent applied to the factors. Okay, and you can tell by looking at the graph. Are we bouncing? Are we having a point of inflection? Are we crossing linearly? Okay, here are the other three equations. And then at the very bottom, uh, they gave me some information and then I just uh, created the factors and I don't have much information, so I just wrote down, I assumed there was one, but you could change these values. You could put like a five here or a seven here, or even you could put like a negative number here because they don't tell you the end behavior. So their infinite number of answers are two, eight, and C. Now for three, you have to just make sure it's a negative value because it says it's extending from quadrant two to four, which means it's all degree and negative leading coefficient. So make sure it's like some negative value here. And for E, same idea, it's quadrant three to quadrant four. So make sure the leading coefficient's negative. But aside from that, the factors and, and the order of the zeros is the same as A, B, and C. That strategy did not change. Okay, so um, very good practice. Uh, hopefully it wasn't too bad.